Now the chances are, if you're considering buying a new set of irons this year, then the likelihood is, then the T-Series from Titleist is likely to be on the list. And the chances are, out of that T-Series lineup, you could well be considering the T200 or the T150. And you're asking yourself the question, what is the difference between these two? Well, hopefully in today's video, I can provide you with at least some of those answers. Now, one of the first questions you're gonna ask yourself is which model is suitable for me in terms of my capabilities? And then you're gonna look at Tyler's website and each of the four irons are categorized. And they're tour irons, players irons, and forgiving irons, game improvement irons. But from my experience so far in the T-Series lineup, there's a lot of crossovers. And what I'm trying to find out today is for me personally, where would I sit? And I'm very much torn between a T-150 and a T-200. So first of all, what are the differences between these two? Now the first thing is different is the way they look, but I'm gonna push the kind of shelf appeal aspect to one side for a second and talk about how they're made up in terms of those, uh, or how the looks affect the way they're made inside. And that's because one, the T200, is a hollow body dying. And what you'll see from that, is there's no cavity whatsoever. It's a nice looking iron, and it's a nice finish to it, and far better than its predecessor. But inside is a bit of tungsten, but a hollow body, and in my opinion, in previous iterations of any hollow body iron, there's been a slight issue with the sound and potentially the feel. So then you move into the T150, and the T150 is definitely in that player spectrum in terms of its size and profile, but it's a forged iron. There's a bit of tungsten in there as well, but it's got a uh, potentially much softer sound and feel. So straight away, there are some key differences between the two, and that might affect also your options to blend these two sets, which we'll discuss later in the video. Now, sound and feel are very subjective, of course, but we're gonna do our very best to try and record some audio using this very scientific method of a can of Coke and our microphone as close to the ball as we can possibly get it. And I'm gonna stop talking for a little while while you just listen to the two shots being played side by side. Now for me, what you'll notice is traditionally the hollow bodied sound as I would describe it as being a little bit clicky. The T200 has massively improved on that and does definitely, without doubt, the, one of the best sound in hollow bodied irons. However, when you listen to that T150, and I don't know whether we've got that audio in a position right where you can actually hear the difference, but I can certainly feel it and hear it inside the studio and you've just got that much softer, purer feel. But I can't argue the T200 is fantastic in terms of that hollow body sound and feel. But then of course you would hope there's some differentials in terms of performance and with the use of Trackman, hopefully again, I'm gonna highlight the differences between these two sets of irons. We're gonna be using the seven iron as the barometer and in terms of loft, there is a difference before we go any further. And that is the T200 is lofted at 30.5 degrees and the T150 is weaker and a little bit more traditional at 32. So obviously what we're expecting to see maybe is a little bit more distance out the T200. We're also expecting to see maybe a little higher launching ball and a higher spinning ball from the T150. And we're also expecting to perhaps see a little bit more forgiveness from the T200s. We'll soon find out when I start hitting some balls and I think we'll just get straight into whichever one this is. Right, I've got the T200 to start with. Love the way it sits at address. For me, it's competing, don't forget, with the likes of the P790s, the Paradigm, um, the ZX4, isn't it, in terms of maybe that's more of a game improvement iron, but all those bo hollow bodied irons that are out there. And for me, this is the most traditional in its look. And I, and I mean size and profile rather. It's very compact, it's not too thick of a top line, not a lot of offset look in there, and it just looks like to me more of a player's profile than uh, perhaps what it's up against in terms of competition. But how does it play? That's a super solid ball and maybe, I know the mic's been moved back up on my chest now, I don't know whether you'd pick up the audio, but that's exactly that sort of slight clicky sound, but vastly improved, but in terms of performance, just everything I expect to see from a 30.5 degree lofted seven iron with a CG placement that is designed to help it launch the ball high, because that's exactly what it does. Ball flight seems to be everything I'd want it to be. It's coming down at plenty enough of a steep angle. That was a really good strike. I'll be interested to see what Trackman says in terms of the likes of the spin numbers there, the things that hollow bodied irons traditionally sort of fall down on. 
but I would find it very hard to criticise in sort of every department that we've looked at so far and I'm expecting a good set of numbers in terms of Trackman. A bit of a pull. I'll move, I think we'll just stay on and we'll move straight into the T150. Let me just get these two side by side and give you some thoughts. I mean, straight away you start to see that there is, there is a difference. There's a slight change in the profile, but not, nothing significant. Let's hit the first ball. Again, really nice at address. Not overly big, not overly small on my eye. Sits pretty much perfect. Again, really solid strike. Slightly softer. It's not the softest iron. There's a little bit of sort of... Uh, Reverb in the room itself, so you, it just enhances that clickiness a little bit. The sharper sound just comes out a little bit for me that is different from out on the fairways. And I think it's a good time to maybe switch over to the fairways. I'll hit one more and then we'll talk about what happened. Yeah, really two good solid shots with the T150. Sound really good, feel really good. Just going to switch out to a couple of shots that we played out on the fairway. The one thing that I'll feed back before we get to dry ball data I didn't see huge differences in terms of performance. So we played from the same spec um, from the fairway and the balls landed in very, very similar positions and the ball flight wasn't too different to be honest with you. And a lot of those variables that I did see would have been down to the quality and consistency of strike. So on the fairway at least, there wasn't a suggestion that the two degrees or the one and a half degrees made a huge difference in terms of the performance that you would quite expect. So, I'll hit some more balls and I think all we need to do is wrap this one up by having a look at dry ball data and find out what Trackman at least tells us is different between a T150 and a T200. Today's video is brought to you in partnership with Hot Golf, the online golf megastore bringing you the hottest deals in golf and of course the clubs featured in today's video. Find the link to the Hot Golf website in the description below and check out some incredible giveaways and offers. Now before we get into the data, I just want to make one other comment about the way these two things look because it's key for me and there's a lot of options to mix sets, combo sets if you like. And the idea of mixing the T150s and the T200 seems a good idea to me. So that's short irons in the T150s, longer irons in the T200s. But the one criticism I have of this T-Series lineup is they've changed the way they look. And what I mean by that, just the finish alone, you've got a matte finish on the, uh, or brushed satin, whatever you want to refer to it as, in the T100s and T150s. And then when you go to the T200 and the T350s, it becomes a high chrome finish. And I just think it'd have been better keeping them all together than however you want to mix your bag set up, they would all look very much streamlined within the bag. So that's, I think, an error from Titleist. But anyway, into the data. Um, we'll do what I normally do, and that's I'll throw some averages up on screen at the end if people want to break it all down. But essentially, here's the two comparisons in terms of averages. Um, first of all, let's start with that club head speed because it's rel relative. In and around 75 mile an hour, so nice, easy swinging. Not too much to split them in that sense with an average ball speed of 107 uh, on the 200, 106.7 uh, on the 150. So again, very, very similar ball speeds coming off, even though uh, one and a half degrees difference in loft. Then you've got that peak height, 79 feet, 79 feet, really interesting. Launch angle 19.3, 19.1 pretty much identical right now which means a carry distance and we'll talk about spin in a minute well we'll talk about spin now four eight on the t200 five three so that's the first real differential in that we've got a lot more spin at 500 revs is probably quite important and that has a slight effect on the carry distance so 150 going back to the first column 150 on a t200 147 on the 150s final number Descent angle, 44.9, 44.3. Very much relative to launch angle and that spin combination. Not a lot to separate them at all. So, overall feeling is this. In my opinion, as ever, we keep on seeing the same old thing. Loft is only one element of performance. And even though we've got one and a half degrees separating them, I don't think you can necessarily see that within those numbers. That being said, everything put together... I'm leaning more towards the T150s on a personal level. I like that spin number. I like all the data parameters. They tick every box, whereas perhaps you could argue the T200 just dips a little off in spin and we're not 
losing a great deal in terms of overall carry distance on that T150. Couple that with the better looks and the better sound and feel. For me, don't forget all those subjective matters, then I'd be leaning towards the T150. But not a huge amount to separate these two irons on a forgiveness level always very difficult to tell i couldn't if i'm honest with you separate the two of them between the strikes i hit both in here and out on the golf course right that's me done that's the best i can do in terms of a health don't forget they're my numbers they're not your numbers so as ever if you're thinking about these two sets of irons then get out there try them yourself and no doubt uh, you'll come to the right decision as ever thank you for watching and i'll see you all soon